Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hope you're all having an amazing day. We have a lot of news to get through in this video, and I really want to discuss with you guys some information concerning Big Narve. This is an exclusive, and I've also written this up as an article as well, so of course you can find that linked in the video description. As we all know, the highest end card in the RDNA lineup thus far is the RX 5700 XT and performs roughly on par with the Radeon 7 aka it's good enough to take on Nvidia's most of Nvidia's lineup should I say but cards such as the RTX 2080, 2080 uh, Super and of course the RTX 2080 Ti AMD currently has no answer for so we've all been waiting for Big Narve and wondering, well, where is it? We're looking on the horizon and it just doesn't seem to be there. Well, there have been some recent reports concerning Big Narve. Uh, there was actually a, a report on a Taiwanese forum recently, and according to this report, a Big Narve is up to twice the die size of the uh, RX 5700 XT, so it's around 505 mm squared, which is pretty damn big, to be totally honest. And the reports are that it's also up to twice the performance as well. Indeed, I'm hearing that the big Narve is around 80 compute units. The thing is, though, when is the card actually bloody being released? And a lot of folks are expecting AMD to reveal it at CES 2020. Well, according to one of my sources, that is not going to be the case at all. CES 2020 is instead going to focus on the lower end cards in the RDNA lineup and also primarily a lot of stuff on mobile. If you're unsure why AMD are focusing a lot on mobile, look at what Nvidia are doing in the mobile market. Cards such as the RTX 2060 are extremely popular at the moment for gaming laptops indeed. Gaming laptops are becoming just increasingly popular anyway. Personally, and I speak here from a personal opinion, personal only, I like laptops, they're cool and everything, but I do prefer a gaming desktop because, for one, upgradability, but I do understand that gaming notebooks slash laptops are definitely considerably easier. They are a lot more portable, which means that if you do a lot of traveling, for example, you have a lot less room in your place to kind of put together a gaming setup, then laptops are obviously the way to go. But regardless of the reason, the popularity is hard to argue with, and AMD don't want to be left out in the lurch, and they want a card such as, of course, we've been seeing the RX 5600, and there is a lot of news on that recently, and we've covered it most of it, sorry, most of it on the channel. Anyway, so CES 2020 is almost certainly not going to be when AMD chooses to reveal information for the big Narve. I have heard that they, from a different source that they may provide some information for the second generation of RDNA architecture, but it potentially may be kind of an overview. It also looks like they're going to be giving information for Zen 3 as well, although once again I'm hearing that it's not going to be super in-depth architecture stuff, it's going to be kind of an overview and all of the roadmap, and it also looks like from the wording as well of uh, their uh, tweets recently, and also I believe on the page itself, on their website, it looks like they're kind of gearing it more towards the data center and the server market. Anyway, I am veering way off topic here. So what I am hearing is that Big Narve is going to launch, wait for it, summer. Now the release window is not 100% nailed down from what I'm hearing here. However, summer is the target launch. And this is actually very interesting because TSMC allegedly are going to be receiving a way bigger order from AMD and things are really going to hit the stride in the second half of 2020, which would obviously coincide rather well with the launch of a new graphics card. So what about the name then? Well, it's not going to be the RX 5000 series. Um, there have been a couple of uh, emails, actually by a couple I mean a ridiculous amount of emails that you guys have been sending me because of the Tech Power Up database, which has some preliminary specifications of the RX 5000 series higher end SKUs. And this is not me throwing shade at Tech Power Up at the end of the day, it's just a placeholder, and they put them there for obvious reasons. But from what I'm hearing, RX 5000 is gonna stop at the RX 5700 XT for the highest end SKU. 
for the second generation of RDNA, which of course will feature things such as ray tracing, that will be the RX 6000 uh, series. So how reliable is this information? Well, this same source told me that Vega 20, aka Vega 7NM, would be coming to gamers, and then I was uh, provided updated information by this very same source that it was Radeon 7. So uh, I also said that it would be at uh, the event and it ended up being at the event so his information is generally pretty damn accurate so uh, obviously things can change on a dime but from what I'm hearing thus far he is pretty certain that this is going to be the case. So this is where things get a bit interesting. You might have heard of Nvidia Killer and that's because one of my sources told me that Narve 23 was the Nvidia Killer and I asked him specifically, well, what about Narve 21? And he seemed a lot less excited about Narve 21. According to what he'd learned, Narve 23 was the GPU that AMD's internal teams were most excited about. Great. The thing is, a couple of my other sources are telling me that Narve 21 is the highest end GPU now. So there's a bit of confusion on my part of which is the highest end SKU. Once again, I'd like to reiterate something I said Ooh, a good couple of minutes ago. I'm hearing it's up to 80 compute units for this second generation of RDNA, but I don't have a specific figure. And the problem is that I don't know which of those two SKUs, Narve 21 or 23, is the one with ATCU. I'm going to call it ATCU. It could end up being more, it could end up being a little bit less, but 80 seems a good placeholder for this video. So it's like, okay, is it potentially possible that Narve 23 is the NVIDIA killer because it's the card which AMD feels is going to op uh, represent the best price slash performance? Maybe they feel it's going to be the card which is priced in a way with enough features that they feel it's going to render NVIDIA's lineup kind of pointless for the mid-range, which obviously we all know the mid-range is the cards which sell the best. It's also potentially possible that we will see two high-end SKUs in the second generation of RDNA, but the lower-end uh, GPUs will be taken care of with the first generation. So basically AMD will focus the second generation on the high-end cards, which will take on NVIDIA's Halo, uh, Halo products, excuse me, and lower end GPUs, which would be the equivalent of taking on, let's say, the RTX 2060 or what, or below, they will be for the first generation of RDNA. It's going to be fascinating to see what actually happens from AMD. Now, I find this particularly interesting because it looks like AMD will be facing stiff competition this year from NVIDIA. There's a report going around at the moment from an analyst who claims that NVIDIA's Ampere architecture will have a huge, tremendous, massive bump in performance over Turing. The claim is it's going to offer twice the performance and at half the power, which would be absolutely ridiculous, quite honestly. Unfortunately, it's very ambiguous what they mean by twice the performance. Do they mean rasterization performance with traditional graphics? So in other words, you're playing Doom and you're running around at twice the frame rate, or do they mean ray tracing performance? I honestly would be a lot more inclined to believe a ray tracing performance, but at the end of the day, I don't know that. NVIDIA are very secretive with their products, so unfortunately I don't have any really good sources with NVIDIA, though I have released a couple of exclusives. One thing I have heard is that uh, Ampere, or RTX 30, is going to be considerably more efficient. And I have heard that one of the main goals is to improve a ray tracing performance. As we all know, they really got dragged over the coals for the ray tracing performance of the first generation of uh, cards with Turing. I have been testing out ray tracing a lot recently, maybe for an upcoming video which might be to do with the next generation consoles, but uh, I won't ever do that on the camera again. Um, and I, I think ray tracing does look really cool. Unfortunately, the performance degradation with it enabled is just ridiculous. And so hopefully an improved architecture from NVIDIA which would reduce the performance penalty 
is on the cards. Uh, haha, that was unintentional. And as we all know, the next generation of RDNA will also support it. So it's really in NVIDIA's best interest at the moment to double down on ray tracing performance. As for traditional rasterization performance, it's a pretty tall order. Um, it would mean that they not only massively increase the performance, but they're doing so at half the power. And obviously this is not just going to be like, oh, 7nm. Uh, it's not going to be that at all. It would also imply that they're drastically improving the architecture as well. So it's not just a tweak to the 7nm process and then throwing in some additional ray tracing cores and calling it good by cranking up the clock frequency a little bit. It would imply that there are some fundamental changes to the architecture which would drastically increase the performance. What are they? Unfortunately, I don't know yet because... Well, NVIDIA are really good at holding fire on uh, revealing any details. We've, of course, seen the self-driving cars will be using uh, Ampere, but that's going to be uh, in a year or two time. So, once again, we still can't get that much information even from that. With all that said, though, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. No more stuff if you did. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.